Well, first of all, thank you for having me again this year. It's great to see you folks out there. I love coming to this conference each year and having the opportunity to talk with you. When I spoke with you last year, I left you with a question. And that question was, are you the kind of person that does the easiest, most popular thing? Or are you the kind of person who's going to stand out from the crowd, step out from the crowd, and do something that's different and do what's best? And so as I thought about this year, I thought, what's a great example of someone who stood out from the crowd and been different? And interestingly enough, there was a girl by the name of Ashley Kimball, a 17-year-old high school student who chose to step out, be different from her peers, and do something that made a difference in the life of another human being. I've always been an active person. I've always enjoyed the outdoors. When I was a little kid, the mountain was my playground. It's always going to be a passion for me. I was an infantry assaultman in the Marine Corps. I was shot in Afghanistan in 2012. Those injuries left me partially paralyzed, and I decided to electively amputate my leg. I have a pretty heavy-duty foot. It allows me to be very active, but at the same time, it's a bit heavy. Anything that requires more energy really just fatigues me faster. I live in a nerd town. Huntsville is the hub of engineering in Alabama. We have so many new career tech programs, like advanced manufacturing and engineering right in our high school. Reset the clamp, a little bit tighter. My brother started a school initiative for engineering, and he had a student who was really interested in doing some kind of biomedical project. Well, maybe she could redesign a lighter, more versatile foot. So this is the mold, and we printed one of these. I'd always kind of wanted to be a doctor, wanted to discover biomedical engineering. I was like, well, that's the perfect combination of medical and engineering. The whole foot together weighs two and a half pounds. Ideally, we would like to get it within 1.7 pounds. Yeah, that sounds great. Once we got the prosthetic from Kendall, we had crazy ideas. We took the whole foot apart and modeled the original prosthetic in Siemens software. And I'm just going to draw two holes there real fast. Solid Edge lets me design and test the foot before we ever actually build it. We tell it a few things that we need, and then it takes all that information and it decides what's going to maximize the strength and minimize the weight to create a part that would be the lowest weight possible for Kendall. This has taken almost a year to the day. I don't think this has ever been done by a 17-year-old girl before. There you go. Awesome. It feels strong. It feels sturdy. It does feel a lot lighter. Nerds rule the world. Nerds got us to the moon. Nerds are doing things with prosthetics that I have never dreamed of doing. And go. Having a lighter foot possibilities that would not have been there before. You know, the more kids that uh, can learn this stuff at earlier ages, they can go on to create new and better things that we're not even dreaming of right now. It's amazing. In the future, I want to do the things that are impossible right now. If I can design this prosthetic now, I can't wait to see what I will design in the future. So, wow, right? Um... Amazing stuff, and if Ashley, at age 17, can step out and be different, you can too. So why step out, though? Why not be the same as everyone else? Why not do the easy thing, the most popular thing? Because those who step out are the leaders of tomorrow. And it happens, right? Right here in the UK, Dyson starts with a, a simple idea and thinks, I can do this different. I can do this better couple seats of solid edge a few years ago, works to build the next engineering powerhouse that you have today. Now you might say, well, but that's one in a million. You know, does that really happen to regular companies? And the answer is it does happen. In fact, a guy by the name of Clayton Christensen, Harvard professor, some years ago, probably 20 years ago, wrote a book because he saw this pattern. And the pattern goes like this. If you look at performance and time, any particular industry will tend to improve performance over time on some sort of linear scale. And so the industry moves along and it progresses. But along comes some disruptive technology. And it starts in that lower left corner and most people say, oh, that's, that's funny, that's a joke, it's very interesting, but it'll never be anything. And the next thing you know, it's all the way in the upper right-hand corner and it's killing the competition. So if you're willing to take a chance and step out and be different, you can be 
the guy in the upper right hand corner. So it all starts with you, of course. You have to make that decision to step out and be different. But we're there to support you. And how do we support you? The first is with next generation design tools. You need the tools to be able to do that. And we want to provide access to all people like Ashley, 17 year old high school student, or a small business or a larger business by basically democratizing the technology, taking all the Siemens technology and providing it to you in a convenient, easy to consume way. But we also want to be with you as you grow. So maybe you start and you learn some of the next generation technologies, but then you need to integrate your operations horizontally, maybe bring in ECAD or vertically and start doing CAM in-house, and we can grow that with you. And small businesses are doing this today. So you see these companies up here. These are small businesses that have stepped out from the crowd, and they will be the leaders of tomorrow. So watch this space. And it's happening again right here in the UK, just up the road in Leeds carbon performance, using these next generation technologies to produce 30% lighter weight parts. But it's not only lighter weight, it works better. So it's both lightweight and works better, stiffer. One of the little known things about next generation technologies is the ability to combine parts. So in this case, he combined nine parts to one. Huge savings in terms of managing suppliers, deadlines, etc. I was talking to a customer here in the UK, Prime Metals, yesterday. They have in prototype right now a project where they're combining 30 parts into one part. And the savings from that are absolutely enormous. But how are they doing it? What are these next generation technologies? You've seen a preview of some of these this morning with the other folks on stage. But we see the world a little differently. We see it's very important to not only have the next generation technologies, but bring them together into your current design process. So you're going to see a ton of stuff here. In fact, you go through the exhibit hall, you'd say it's the exhibit hall of generative reverse engineering and additive. These are technologies that are very, very popular today and a part of the next generation technology stack. But very importantly, in that center circle is what you do today. So if you see, there's two different colors here. The orange circle are solid models, the things you do today in SolidWorks or Pro-E. And you're doing those models. They're solid models with cones and spheres and cylinders. And on the outer rim are these what used to be disconnected technologies. All these technologies use a mesh of triangles. A bag of triangles is all there is. You see it on the screen, but it's not terribly useful to you because it's a bag of triangles. Well, uniquely, Siemens technology brings to you something called convergent modeling that allows you to take all those triangle data from all these new applications and integrate it in with your solid models in a completely seamless way. So let's see a quick video of how that works. So this part, you've seen some generative already this morning. This part uses generative technology. We load it up, we put on the loads and constraints, and we can generate several different versions of that. Whether that's a version that has a few struts, or whether that's a version that has a lot of struts because it's a lot lighter weight, or a fully manufacturable two and a half axis version of the part, your choice. But more importantly, we're going to be able to integrate this, what is just a bag of triangles, into our solid modeling world. First of all, we figure out automatically what are the regions that are analytic in some way. The yellow parts are the planes, the cyan parts are the cylinders. Not only do we find those, but we can now make use of those. So this part, even though it's a bunch of triangles, we can now assemble into our assembly using standard constraints, mating constraints, alignment constraints. But not only can we put it in place, we can now do modeling on it. No special modeling commands, no special system. Simply borrow edges off an adjacent part and use those to make cutouts through this, even though it is not a solid model. It's just a triangles model. Now, looking at this a little bit more deeply, we also need to create a tray insert. And we're going to use some reverse engineering technology here. So we scanned in this bottle. It comes complete with part number. Well, we don't want part number in our holder inset. So we're just going to delete that out very easily and refill that hole instantaneously. But let's integrate in the solid model then. So the gray part you see is a solid model that you're used to. We can simply difference the triangle set from the solid model, as you see. Maybe apply a little material to it and assemble it into place. But get ready for something that's even more amazing. You're again able to operate on that solid model using traditional solid edge commands. So for example, again, I'm going to create a couple cutouts by now. That's, that's an easy thing to do. But what about round edge? Right? There's, there's no solid model here. I'm going to round the edges of this part. 
And I can also use synchronous technology on these faceted parts, on these, on these faceted models. So I can move these faces even though it's a triangle model. Now, as you see that, I think a lot of you in the audience, you're like, yeah, but that's like feature modeling. You're just doing feature modeling. And that's the point, is you're doing feature modeling on sets of triangles, that stuff on the outer rim that has always been the domain of different separate systems, now fully integrated into Solid Edge. And you really can't tell whether you're operating on a triangle model or a solid model. But there's more to next generation technology than just triangle based technologies or converging the two. And that is the core of design. You remember that middle part? Well, in that middle part, you spend your day there every day. And if you're using technology that is based on history based modeling, you're not using a next generation technology. Thanks to our friends at PTC, history based modeling was popularized in 1988 89 timeframe. It's literally 30 years old. But there's something better. And that something better is synchronous technology. I showed a video last year about how we can go from the design on the left to the design on the right in under two minutes, which if you haven't seen that video, you'll say that seems completely impossible. And yet it is fully possible because we're able to do that through synchronous technology. It's very important because design is not a linear process. You hit roadblocks, you have to back up, you have to start again. So I can literally change my mind and change my design just as fast as I change my mind. I got a video here just to show you a couple things that you'll see in synchronous technology, the ability to borrow faces off other parts, the ability to easily use faces for cutouts. Very importantly, look for the dimensional aspects here. I can put dimensions on the solid model. The solid model captures everything. So I put the dimensions on and I can modify it however I like. I can line up faces in the solid model and once they're lined up, they stay lined up permanently. But these dimensions that you're used to putting in sketches are not on a sketch. This could have been an imported model. Could have come from anywhere. Could have come from Pro E, NX, anywhere you like. Put the dimensions on the solid model and edit the dimensions and the solid model reacts to that. This is unique and you will not see this in other systems. A gigantic change like that, changing that angle, that's a start over thing in a history based system and yet super simple. Cut and paste, very easy. I cut one part, I paste it over here, I rotate it around. In this case, I need to connect them up, so I'm going to use a loft. Put in a loft and I say, well, but I need it to be tangent between the two, so let's set that. But now in, in the context of the assembly, I'm able to very simply make my part fit the context of the assembly. It's modifying this part to fit and align over here, and everything else just works. So it, it fills in the transition gap, and as you can see, it all holds together. So if you're not using synchronous technology and next generation, you're really holding back your design process. But let's suppose you made that first step and you're using some next generation technologies. What now? The what now is to step further into the portfolio to be able to do more across your operation or do more vertical integration. And we can support you there fully. So sure, solid edge, next generation design but also electrical design with tools from Mentor that are now part of the Solid Edge family. Simulation, manufacturing, tech pubs, no matter what your need is, we have you covered. And this is really important because the boundaries between systems are disappearing. So if you think about it, we have these kind of three different phases, ideation, realization, and utilization. But those are collapsing, and we're seeing that those are coming all close together into one big thing. And so not only do you have a digital twin of, let's say, your design, which we're used to thinking about, the CAD model, but also a digital twin of your production model, a digital twin of your performance model. And it's feeding your design process. So you can literally get data from your manufacturing floor or data from your production uh, product in, in process and feed that back to improve your manufacturing process or, or your design process in a very virtuous circle. Now, if you want to see some examples of this kind of like using uh, the, the data from the floor, bringing that back into your design process, a great place to see that's right here at Sheffield University. We have a great partnership with Sheffield. And just literally a short walk from here is the MindSphere Lounge, where you can learn all about these kind of technologies. And this isn't just happening at very big companies. So for example, WashTech, not a big company, but they're bringing this all together. <coughs> Excuse me. They're bringing together the ECAD, the electronics. They're bringing together the manufacturability. They're, in fact, doing fluid flow analysis. They make machines that wash industrial parts, and they're doing fluid flow analysis of how the nozzle works exactly and how to improve that design 
They're tying all that in with requirements management. So no matter what size your company, you have the capability of doing these things. And we want to bring that to you, no matter what size company you are. We're democratizing this technology, providing access to all. So how do you try this out? How do you get going in this? The first is free trial. So we honestly believe when you try it, you will buy it. It's simply better, it's simply different, it's next generation, but you decide, do I want to try it out by downloading it and running it on my desktop, or do I want to run it instantly in my web browser? Up to you, either way, give it a try. Another way you can engage with our technology, and I would invite everyone in the room to do this today, is through the Solid Edge portal. Solid Edge Portal allows you to collaborate with your customers and suppliers no matter what CAD system you use. So if you're there in the audience today with ProE, SolidWorks, Inventor, whatever it may be, and you're collaborating with your customers or suppliers, and the way you're doing that is you're sending them files or you're, you're putting them in Dropbox if you're, if you're very modern. You're not emailing them. You're putting them in Dropbox. But instead, you can use the Solid Edge Portal. You upload your data to your customer or supplier. It automatically sends an invitation for them to view it. You decide whether it's view only or it's view and download so they can access the data. They can mark it up and you receive that back. It's all in a full closed loop, all through the web, and there's no file exchange. And of course, it supports all common modern CAD formats, and it even supports Solid Edge as well. We also want you to have a choice of how you access the product. I think this is critically important, right? So if you're a small company, you don't have a lot of capital, Subscription is absolutely the right choice for you. Small monthly payment to get access to high-end technology. Maybe you want to lock that down for a year, get a little better price point. Sure, subscription for monthly, subscription for yearly. But what about if you're a larger company and have some capital? Lots of people you see on the stage today will tell you, you can't buy my software. They won't say that. They'll say, I only sell subscription software, which means I will only rent my software to you. And when you stop paying me, you can't use it anymore. Well, we don't feel that's right. We feel like you ought to choose how you buy your software. We shouldn't tell you how you buy your software. If you're a smaller company and want to go on subscription, great. If you're a larger company and have the capital to buy it and never send me another dollar, we're perfectly fine with that. Perpetual license is fully available from us. But even better news for students and startups, completely free. So people like Ashley Kimball, they got access to the software because it's completely free to them. It's free to all students of all ages. You could be a seven-year-old, uh, middle school student, grandmother in continuing education. It doesn't matter. Solid Edge is free to all those constituencies because we want people to have access to the very best technology. It's also free for startups. And this is a, a great new program that we started a couple of years back. We have nearly a thousand people in the Solid Edge startup program, a thousand companies, and it's continuing to grow at a very fast pace. 43 different countries. These are people who made that decision and said, I'm willing to be a little different. I'm not necessarily going to choose the most popular thing. I'm going to be a little different, and I'm going to go with Solid Edge and find that I can be different, not only different, but better. But it all starts with you. You have to make that decision. So how do you get started then? I invite you to take one of these three steps, or maybe all three. If you want to learn more about generative design, and there were several people talking about that today, I would suggest you go to Udemy and learn about it. So I don't know if you've heard of Udemy. You might want to write it down. It's U-D-E-M-Y. And yes, it's pronounced Udemy. Go to Udemy and search, or search Google for Udemy Generative, and you'll get a course on generative design that shows you what it's really all about, how it really all works. Introduce yourself to this new technology. Access for all, try Solid Edge. Just Google try Solid Edge, and you'll be able to find us. You'll be able to get your uh, trial either through the cloud or in your web browser or through download. And then collaborate with any CAD. I would literally, I would suggest everybody in this room it's absolutely free to collaborate through the Solid Edge portal. It works on any device. So literally on your phone, you can access your data. Uh, using that, you can share it with others. So just Google Solid Edge portal. And finally, I would just invite you to be different. Are you that person who's going to do the same thing as the person next to you? Choose the most popular CAD system? Choose the most popular or easy choice? Are you the person who's going to step out and say, no, I'm going to be different because when I can be different, I can be better. I hope you're going to be that person. Thank you. Thanks so much.